how's it going? My name's Alex, and I am at the pilot in Mawa, Mawa, New Jersey, M-A-H-W-A-H, however you say that down. But anyways, I'm at this pilot in New Jersey, and in this video, I want to show or share with you guys how to dr drive legally. Okay, I want an important part. How to legally drive from New York, New Jersey area, all the way to California over the weekend. Now we're gonna jump inside on the computer and break down the numbers here in a second, but let me tell you about myself, my experience. I have now been a trucker for five years. Uh, well, no, I'm actually not a trucker. Um, a transporter, a transporter, there you go. I have been a transporter for five years now. I started in 2015 and right now it's 2021. And so I have been working since. And for all those years, a logbook was required. Recording your duty status was required. Now, we just have to do it on a little app with a little computer connected to the truck. But that's beside the point. All five years, I have been using Logbook. And it's important because you realize how to really manipulate the clock in your favor after some time has gone by, after you've gained some experience and knowledge in the industry. So that's what I wanna share with you guys, how to drive from New York to California over the weekend. All right, let's jump in the truck. Really quick, just to clarify, now that I have it pulled up, guys, it's 41 hours from New York to LA, and obviously the weekend, you know, Saturday, Sunday, that there's 48 hours in the weekend, so technically, uh, I, I'm not talking about doing it illegally, I'm talking about legally, you pick up a load on Friday, and you deliver Monday, because in, in a car or in a normal vehicle, you know, by all means, you could just drive straight through if you, if you could and if you really wanted to. It's probably not a good idea, so don't do that, but you know, here, but we have it pulled up now. So 41 hours. Keep that in mind. That you, we're picking up a load Friday morning, and the broker, when we book the load, tells us it has to deliver Monday. Here's how you get it done. My first question to you is: How many shifts are there between Friday and Monday? If you said two or three, you're wrong. There's actually four shifts, right? So Friday shift, Saturday shift, Sunday shift and Monday morning shift, right? So this is the important part. That Monday morning shift is crucial to making this happen. So here's a scenario, right? Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon, you deliver a load, you hop on the load board, and you see what's out there. And a load pops up, okay? There isn't many loads, there isn't many good loads, but a load pops up and it says, must deliver Monday, right? Now they give you a window on Monday to deliver, but it says must deliver Monday. And because of that, that means they're probably paying, you know, sometimes $1.80, in between $1.80, and two dollars and twenty cents a mile. So if you figure it's about two thousand, uh, the route I'm looking at right here, this one, two thousand seven hundred seventy-four miles. You figure that's about five thousand dollars. Let's just keep it round numbers for simplicity. It probably could be somewhere in there, but five thousand dollars. Okay, and you're looking at this load, thinking like, oh man, if only it could deliver Thursday. Right, if only, or Tuesday, my apologies. If only instead of Monday, I could deliver Tuesday. And you're like, well, let me ask the broker. So you make the phone call, you call the broker. It's Thursday afternoon, so you can't pick it up today. So it's Thursday afternoon, you call the broker. You're like, hey, I can pick up this load Monday. That's not a problem, I'm not too far. But is there any way we could deliver Tuesday? And the broker tells you, no, absolutely not. It has to deliver Monday sometime, anytime throughout the day between, you know, whatever, eight and four, whatever the hours are in California, something usually like that for shippers and receivers, eight to four, right? And you're like, ah, oh, darn, okay. So when you've been doing this for a while, you realize that yes, you should book that load and here's how, okay? So you tell the broker right away, I gotta pick it up first thing in the morning, okay? So whenever they open seven or eight o'clock in the morning, on the East Coast, it's usually eight o'clock, um, you know, because they don't, they don't get started super early, but seven to eight in the morning, you have to pick up the load. Now, you can pick up the load actually a little bit later than that, but no later. The important part is no later than 10 a.m. That's the important part. Do not pick up the load later than 10 a.m. because that'll mess it all up. So by 10 a.m., you're loaded and rolling. Now, a brief explanation on hours of service is you can drive up to 11 hours a day when you're a professional or commercial driver, and that has to be within your 14-hour window. So you have a 14-hour shift clock, and of that 14 hours, 11 hours can be driving, right? So that's the important thing. That means you can drive 11 hours. Now, in that 11 hours, there has to be some kind of 30-minute stop, okay? Now, it can be like you stop to fill up, and it takes you 15 minutes, but then you have to take a break for the other 15 
working, but throughout the day, you have to take a 30 minute break. And so that means in reality, it, to do 11 hours, it'll take you at least 11 hours and 30 minutes. Now, every morning it's recommend, or I think every morning legally you have to do a pre-trip inspection. And I believe even a post-trip inspection is required. And so those are about like five to 15 minutes a piece. So you figure that each of those will take another 30 minutes, let's say. So that means throughout the day, it'll take you 12 hours to do at a minimum of 12 hours to do your 11 hour driving, right? So even though they say 11 of driving, there's a couple things that you have to complete. So that means you'll be working for at least 12 hours essentially. So that means if we are loaded Friday before 10 a.m., 12, let's just, let's just say 10, no later than 10 a.m. That's the important part. So that means 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. we have to drive. That's the 12 hour shift, right? So that means we're doing 12 hours and at 10 p.m. we stop, okay? Uh, so that's, that's a long day, right? Can you imagine you're starting in, uh, you know, in the morning and you're going all the way till 10 p.m. So this will test your endurance, your abilities, and it'll push you, you know, because if you're a morning driver, um, that, you know, that really sucks. But if you're an evening driver, that it's good, but it turns sour quickly because you have to start waking up earlier and earlier in the morning. Legally, we're required to be off duty for 10 hours, and that means the earliest that you could start your shift again is 8 a.m., because 10 p.m. plus 10 hours is 8 a.m., correct? And so 8 a.m., we start the next day shift. And so uh, I don't know where you'd be around, uh, along this route, you know, somewhere probably in Indiana, maybe, uh, somewhere uh, around there. So 8 a.m., we're starting our shift, and we do another 12 hours. And so that means at 8 p.m., that day, which is now Saturday, we're stopping. So 8 p.m., 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., that's our 12 hour shift up counting, right? Okay, so it's now Sunday morning, and you're somewhere in the middle of the country. Good job, you made it halfway. And so you have to start your shift though, because remember, we stopped at 8 p.m. on Saturday. So that means on Sunday morning, we start our shift at six in the morning, right? 10 hours later. And so that means all day you drive and you end up probably somewhere in Arizona, something like that, right in there somewhere, because that part of the country is really wide, so you don't actually get, you don't cross as many states. But that's neither here nor there. But still, that means we start at 6 a.m., that means we're driving until 6 p.m. And so at 6 p.m., we shut down and we go to bed right away, don't waste any time, because uh, the next morning, Monday morning, right? So the broker's probably calling you now, hey, location update, where are you at? So Monday morning, we are waking up because we went to bed at six or off duty at six, 10 hours later. That puts us at four in the morning, okay? So now somewhere in Albuquerque or somewhere in New Mexico or Arizona, you're waking up at 4 a.m. to do another drive shift. So like I already explained several times, if we're starting at 4 a.m., that means we will be at our delivery location, let's call it 12 hours later. So that means we are delivering in like, we're, and I'm routing it right to Los Angeles, right? I mean, sometimes it's like Riverside, it's a little less, and often, or ra very rarely, I should say, it's actually New York City. Sometimes it's like PA, New Jersey, you know what I mean, stuff like that. So this is the most extreme scenario that I'm giving you, so keep that in mind. But you're showing up to, let's say, your receivers at 4 p.m. So right away, you guys might be thinking that's setting off red flags. Oh, Alex, you missed it, because you know, shippers don't work after 4 p.m. You know, that's it, your theory, is gone nothing worked out hold on but don't forget we are basing these hours these clocks this time off of New York time that's Eastern Standard Time and California is not on Eastern Standard Time California is on Pacific Standard Time and that means 4 p.m. which is on our drive time that's what it would be 4 p.m. on New York that means it's 1 o'clock in the morning in LA and all of a sudden, you now drove through over the weekend, you know, 2,700 or so miles. You're, you're on site with your receiver at one o'clock in the afternoon, delivering your load. And more than likely, you're probably putting $5,000 gross revenue in your pocket. Obviously, there's gonna be expenses. And if you figure that a profit margin for an owner operator is about 40%, so there you go, $5,000, let's say 40%, that's 500, that's about two grand after a bunch. Mm, that sounds a little low. Uh, may, may, I mean, maybe you'll keep a little more than that, but still, let's just call it two grand. So you're making $2,000 over the weekend driving those miles. Uh, so that's that's not bad. You know, that's why a lot of people are drivers. That's why a lot of people are truck drivers, you know what I mean? Because uh, you can make a living, but how many people run 
at this, like with this little margin of error. Like this is almost literally no margin of error, right? Think about it because here's, now the important part is, guys, keep in mind that we're doing 11 hours of driving. So 11 times four is 44 and the route takes 41 hours. So we have 44 hours of driving that we have to do in 44 hours of driving, I should say, we have to do 41 hours. So it's, it's not hard when you really break it down. Just very, very few people are willing to drive so late at night and then wake up in the morning or like not pay attention to the clock because remember Arizona doesn't do the whole time thing but they're still three hours ahead right so when you're waking up that Monday morning in Arizona it's 1 a.m. think about it. it's 1 a.m. on the clock right it's on your clock to pay you have to follow your location whichever time your time zone you're in you live in but on when you're waking up and driving in Arizona that Monday morning it's one or two in the morning and that's why most people can't max out their clock and drive with such little margin of error because it takes a long time to develop a skill that you can like really extract as much money as out of the uh, logging or electronic logbook as possible it takes time to get good at extracting money from there now i just want to say that guys for about eight months straight i did a run very similar to this i did a pennsylvania to Washington, to, to Seattle, Washington. I did it for eight months straight, like once a month, every weekend like this, okay? So I know that it's possible, it's totally legit, you can do it, but the important part, a couple key important things, if you are gonna try to do this, a couple key important things. Number one, your equipment better be seriously reliable, okay? And when I'm preaching to you guys in Enterprise Rental, I'm assuming that you're gonna do this run every weekend just about, well, you can't do it legally every weekend because of the drive back and then whatever, but, <laughs> so let's say twice a month, once or twice a month, you're gonna do this. Guys, the best truck for the job is an Enterprise Rental. So that's why I always recommend it because I know whenever I had to do it with an Enterprise Rental, it was much easier. And so, but, so I was doing a PA to Washington for like eight months. It wasn't really a contract, but it was a broker that just really worked with me and helped keep me loaded uh, and so uh, so number one is really ha you have to have reliable equipment number two guys and like I already mentioned it's there's a slim margin of error so you can't be doing this during the winter you can't be here because you're gonna ruin your reputation with that broker and they're not gonna want to work with you next time so you can't be doing this during the winter and that's actually why I selected the Oklahoma you know the I-40 route instead of the Colorado route first of all Colorado DOT sucks I don't like Colorado DOT they're very aggressive but the second thing is I think the weather is usually nicer on this southern route. So just keep it in mind, slim margin of error, you can't have any delays, okay? And then the last thing is just, guys, it's massively uncomfortable, you know what I mean? That there is no time to play Netflix, there's no time to Call of Duty if you have a TV in your thing, like there's nothing, there's no time for TikTok or whatever, you know what I mean? Like you are literally, you're driving for 11, like you're driving for like six hours, you take a break for 30 minutes and then you drive another five or so, you know, whatever the closest truck stop and I don't want to say truck stop usually when I do this I sleep on the exits on ramps or off ramps right because it's literally you're cutting it down to the minute every single time and you're just pulling over at the next available stop and you shut down right then and there and so I mean it's it's the extreme guys there's no doubt in my mind it's the extreme and so I don't recommend it to do it often but when they hang a load that's fifty two fifty five hundred dollars and it has to deliver Monday you really start you you know having this information can be beneficial so anyways guys that's gonna do it let me know in the comments down below um what do you guys think have you done a run like this before um do you have any questions about you know uh what else what other tactics or what other things you can do with the logbook um that are legal and you know on how to best utilize it so it's most profitable for you let me know in the comments down below and i will see everyone in the next video bye